Tales from the Jails with uh, John G. Sutton. I'm going to talk today, again, this is the second time I've spoken to you today, about HMP Coldingley. There's a big uh, article in today's Daily Mirror, what which bra- brands it the, the hell hole, where the prisoners called it the no toilet jail, because apparently the facilities at this dump, this disgusting disgrace to the British system has uh, has broken down and the toilets aren't working and inmates are having to use uh, buckets and receptacles and bottles to actually urinate and defecate in. Uh, There are no internal facilities in the cells. The cells are simply empty cells. That's all they've got in a bed and all the rest of it. But no toilet facilities and no wash basins, no water closets, nothing like that and the inmates are saying that the basic sanitation is failing and the and the wings are in disarray and basically the, the, the place is falling to bits and this is the British government this is the, the Home Office this is the Ministry of Justice that are presiding over this. It is an insult to the integrity of the British government and the British people that they're allowing this to happen. And I believe that, uh, I mean, that there are numerous groups out there that represent inmates, that they should be actually taking the time to have demonstrations outside the prisons and bring it to the attention of the British public. You see, the people who were being locked up in the jails, I've mentioned this many times before, there but for fortune, it's you and I. It's your daughter, your sister, your uncle, your mother, your brother, your grandfather. Everybody's subjected to the law and could end up in a horrible, rat-infested, dirty dump like HMP Coldingley. Uh, there is apparently a refurbishment plan on a way, underway, but it isn't exactly working. And uh, the inmates are living in these filthy, unhygienic conditions. And uh, basically, it's a serious challenge to the security of the prison. And a further problem that they've got in HMP Coldingley is there's uh, been a, a, a big problem with the, 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 the obnoxious substance called spice, apparently. And uh, inmates are managing to procure this. Also, uh, it's infested with flies because uh, the inmates have been brewing hooch and the fumes from the hooch have been attracting flies. Of course, the stuff that they're making is uh, is not hygienic, so they're drinking it. They're going to be poisoning themselves. When I was at Wormwood Scrubs in in the 70s, they were were making hooch there and uh, they added some kind of powerful alcohol. I believe they'd strained it from Brasso. What they did was they poured the Brasso through bread and strained it so it came out as a clear liquid, which is was alcoholic, mixed it into the booze that they'd made, the hooch, and uh, a number of the inmates were seriously affected and it made them partially blind. I mean, this kind of nonsense is going on under the auspices of the Ministry of Justice. We've got uh, an inspector of prisons. They should close. They should have the power to close these places down. Just say, this is unfit for human habitation. If it was a hotel, or if it was a rest home or something like that, they'd be locked up. It'd be shut down. The, pe- the, the, the directors and, and the managers of the hotel, and the, well, they'd be prosecuted. Uh, the health and safety would just step in and say, this is an insult to, uh, to, to the people who are using these facilities, and give them a close notice to give them 24 hours to shut down and get out. The problem that they've got with HM prisons is, as we've been saying here for some time now, is they've got no places. They've got no no places to place inmates.
and uh, that the inmates seem to be uh, lining up and volunteering for these, you know, committing offences. Uh, mind you, the police are now talking about going out on strike because they're seeking to have uh, full uh, rights to, to uh, as workers. And if they go on strike, well, at least it might lower the uh, offending rate because uh, there's that many police officers committing offences these days that it might calm it down a little bit. eh? Because you don't seem to be a great deal of use out there on the streets. We don't see them on the streets anymore. Yeah, unless they're picking up uh, victims. (laughs) Seriously, I mean, come on. Where are we going? You know, police, a, a woman, a female police officer today uh, in, in court, charged and uh, on trial for molesting a little, a little girl. A, 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 a police officer. Oh, she was off duty at the time, but m- molesting a, a, a little child, a, a female child, same, same sex. I mean, this is just getting out of hand, isn't it? And look at the fact that you've got a thousand members of the Metropolitan Police awaiting disciplinary action for various offences, including numerous offences against uh, against people, sexual offences. So that's my little quick moan this evening about uh, the hellhole prison, dubbed the No Toilet Jail, HMP Coldingly. And uh, you can look it up in today's Daily Mirror and you'll see that I'm right about this. Well, I mean, it shows pictures of the jails and it looks, just looks like a, a cheap 1960s Risley-style dump. Imagine the poor prisoners that are suffering that. Nobody takes into account the fact that these are human beings. They can't continue like that. It's an absolute disgrace and it's an insult to society. I'm now going to read you some poems. First of all, off the top of my head, I'll recite one. It's by a man called A. He Hausman, who was the who held the chair of English literature at Oxford University around about 1900. And he published a, a book of verse called A Shropshire Lad. And uh, it's particularly uh, kind of poignant about the time of the start of the the First World War and uh, you read it, a Shropshire lad A. He Houseman, I'll read you some poems, some little samples of the poetry in a Shropshire lad here we go A. He Houseman Into my heart an air that kills from yon far country blows What are those blue remembered hills? What spires? What churches those? That is the land of lost content. I see it shining plain. Those happy highways where I went and cannot come again. And another verse from a Shropshire lad. This is... uh, this is about the shortness of life and how we're only here for a very brief time. And that whilst we're here, we should uh, explore the beauty of this wonderful world that we live in. This is Loveliest of Trees, The Cherry Now by A. E. Houseman. Loveliest of Trees, The Cherry Now is hung with bloom along the bough and stands about the woodland ride wearing white for Easter tide. Now of my threescore years and ten twenty will not come again and take from seventy springs a score it only leaves me fifty more and since to look at things in bloom fifty springs are little room about the woodlands i will go to see the cherry hung with snow don't forget to like and subscribe this is tales from the jails with john g sutton